Welcome to DC Today. Uh, my name is Brian Seitel. It's good to be with you all again this afternoon. It is Thursday, um, September the 28th already. So we're in the last week of September here, getting close to fourth quarter. Um, pretty, pretty, uh, fairly modest, mostly higher day on, on the market, which was nice to see. We've had kind of a tough month here. The Dow's down about 3% or so far, far in the month of uh, September. So nice to see a little bit positive day. And there was a couple of different pieces of economic data that came out that sort of put a little bit of the wind and sails behind some risk assets, both in stocks and bonds. The market closed up 116 points on the day. Um, kind of a trite, tight range, too. It was nice to see kind of a lack of volatility. Volatility had been rising the past couple of, uh, well, really for the month, but especially the past week or so. And we saw the VIX come down about 4% on the day. And interest rates across the curve um, after this data that came out that I'll explain, uh, we're a little lower. And so we've seen rates pop up quite a bit this month and that came off a little bit. So stocks both a little bit better and which means bond prices were a little bit higher and again, volatility lower. So, so the, the data that we saw was really revision. So we had a GDP number for Q2 revised to be in line in the same. There was a component of it, which was the consumer spending part of it, consumption, which really came down quite a bit inside of that number. It was a 1.7 percent attribution before and now it's only a 0.8 so it was come come down by by about half and uh, believe it or not i think that uh, was perceived as somewhat good it means that spending is slowing a little bit which means that um, you know the the economy is cooling a bit it kind of gives a little bit more to the uh, camp of the fed has basically done raising rates um core pce for the quarter today came in also um unchanged it was um, uh, for the quarter 3.7. Year over year is going to get revised tomorrow. So is the month of August. We'll get revised tomorrow. So this might change a little bit. But I added a little note that if year over year core PCE is something like 4.2% right now, and it's expected that it might tick a little lower tomorrow, maybe go to 3.9. But if Fed funds is somewhere between five and a quarter and five and a half, and you have core PCE at, at right around four, you know, 4.2, then you've got a real Fed funds rate, meaning what's over inflation, of a, of a little over 1%. And historically, um, it, which is in restrictive uh, stance, you know, that's what the Fed has done. They've taken real rates above inflation that is designed to bring economic activity down a little bit to cool the inflation numbers that they're trying to get to. And if you look historically, they're... Um, you know, if you look at other recessions, say, for example, other periods of time where we entered into recession, it was restrictive territory was between three and four percent. So we're a little over one now. It doesn't I wouldn't, you know, read into that a, a ton just other other than to say that, yes, it's restrictive, but it isn't as restrictive as it has been to cause an actual contraction before. Um, there was a comment out in, in that segue. There was a comment out today from Fed President uh, Goolsby, who's fairly followed. He's a voting member of the FOMC. And uh, basically said as such, he thought that rates were uh, already restrictive enough that they did not need to move anymore. And this will bring inflation down to their target as is. And uh, that that can be achieved without a sharp rise in unemployment and a sharp you know, economic recession uh, contraction. Um, I actually don't agree with him often on other things. Uh, but I guess as a Fed president, I would agree with that statement. Um, the... Um, the two tens yield curve spread. So we've been watching this. It's been inverted for a year. Um, it was over 100 basis points inverted. It is now only 47 basis points or thereabouts. It moves a little bit after the market closes. But um, you know, it's it's indicative of a lot of things. It isn't you know, short term rates are tied to Fed funds. Long term rates float with market conditions um, globally, and so um, having some long term rates move higher, which is what we've seen this month. You know, the 10 year was over 4.6%, closed below that, closed at 457 on the day. But longer term rates moving higher. Um, I had some comments and some of the factors that could be causing some of those things. Ultimately, you know, infl interest rates are, are more a reflection of inflation expectations than they are a lot of other things. But, you know, does a sovereign debt downgrade in the US matter? Does Japan entering, you know, ending its yield curve control matter? Does the Fed's quantitative tightening campaign matter? You know, I would say yes. I, I don't know that it's um, one thing in, in and of itself, but a combination of all of those things. And then frankly, just, you know, we're 
in deficits right now. We're deficit spending in a country that has completely full employment. So that's not a good thing. And I think all of those things matter with long-term interest rates. And uh, it's sort of be careful what you wish for. It's like the yield curve is inverted, yes. And that is a sign of something not quite right. Usually it means the Fed has over-tightened. Um, and often that can lead to recession. So that's it's a predictive mechanism historically, um, but not every time. And um, But having it uninvert because long-term interest rates are going higher because of all those other factors isn't necessarily a good thing either. And so what, what I said about real rates being restrictive, um, as inflation comes down, that restriction goes higher because if Fed funds is going to stay the same and then inflation is going to go lower, the real number is going higher. And, um, and again, that's why we've seen that three and 4% range in the past. Um, the um, pending home sales on the day were, um, were down 7% uh, for the week. And um, over on the year, it's down 18.5%, 18.7% on the year. So it's still the same story. Housing is still basically stuck. There's no inventory. Prices are staying, you know, solid, which is which I suppose is is supportive um, for things. But until interest rates come down, until there is an ability for people to move, until inventory picks back up, um, I still suspect we'll sort of stay in this kind of stuck area with with uh, with housing. And I think you're seeing that in the pending home sales. There's just not a lot of transactions happening. Um, so let's see, for, uh, for that, I think that was a pretty good kind of around the horn on the day. Um, tomorrow we have, uh, month, like I said, monthly PCE n- uh, numbers, some inflation read that'll be important to look at. Um, we'll have Dividend Cafe in your inbox as well. And, um, and we'll kind of go from, from there. Um, and, uh, but with that, I, it was great reading and, and, and uh, writing for you today. Um, I always enjoy it. Thanks for being here and uh, reach out with questions. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, have a great night. Thank you. Mm